Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Pharmagist. Myself Dr. Haimavati. In today's video, we will be learning about what is Pharmco4 mapping. Uh, so in this video, I will be explaining about what is Pharmco4 mapping. I will give a general view about Pharmco4 mapping. Uh, this will be the first part in this video series and in the next part or uh, in the next coming video I will explain actually what is the process of Pharmaco4 mapping how to do it in this we will see the general overview and what are the different approaches and what are the different software available and uh, what are the advantages of Pharmaco4 mapping so let's begin our video so the term pharmacophore, it was introduced by a scientist named Paul Ehrlich in the early 1900s. So pharmacophore refers to a molecule which carries phoros. Phoros means uh, the essential features responsible for a drug's activity. So a drug molecule means pharmacophore and phoros means carries. So a drug molecule which carries the activity is known as pharmacophore. So drug molecule is pharmacon and carries is phoros. So when you combine both pharmacon and phoros, it became pharmaco4. Now coming to the definition of pharmaco4. So pharmaco4, it indicates the functional or structural capacity of a compound with specific characteristics towards a biological target. As per IUPAC definition, it is an ensemble of steric and electronic features that is necessary to ensure the optimal supramolecular interactions with a specific biological target structure and to trigger or to block its biological response. So it appears as a complex definition, right? So but the definition may be complex, but the explanation is very simple. So pharmacophore is nothing but a cause ensemble that means a group of steric and electronic features so the steric and electronic features of a compound for example it can be hydrogen bond donor or a hydrophobic activity which is responsible for the activity on the protein and optimal supramolecular interactions means the non-covalent interactions so these are the functional groups which are responsible for the non-covalent interactions of the ligands which are responsible for their activity against the protein it is known as pharmacophore so simply speaking that is the uh, meaning of a pharmacophore now coming to the another term which is known as 3d pharmacophore so 3d pharmacophore it specifies the spatial relationships between the groups so in the three dimensional spa uh, space so what are the relationship between the different chemical features that is explained in the 3d pharmacophore so these relationships they are expressed as distances or distance ranges and they can also include other uh, geometric properties such as angles and planes also so for example if you take a 3d pharmacophore for antihistamines it contains two aromatic uh, rings and a tertiary nitrogen so this is uh, the figure which explains this 3D pharmacophore of an antihistamine. So here we can see two aromatic uh, groups which are connected to a tertiary nitrogen by this distance in angstroms. So this is an example for 3D pharmacophore. So it gives a picture about the three dimensional space between these three moieties which are responsible for their activity. Now coming to what are the different features so pharmacophore means it is a set of features which are common to a series of active molecules so we have a ligand molecules so different ligand molecules in pharmacophore modeling we take different ligands and we study their properties so what are the uh, different properties which are studied they can be hydrogen bond donors uh, so they can be hydrophobic regions positively charged groups negatively charged groups and then hydro, hydrogen bond donors so all these uh, properties of molecules these are known as pharmacophoric groups so we identify these pharmacophoric groups which are present in the different ligands and we generate a pharmacophore model so this is an example of a generated pharmacophore model so this uh, slide i have taken in order to explain what is a 
pharmacophore how it is uh, generated so when you submit the ligands to the software it generates the pharmacophore model in this manner so different colors are given for the different features for example here you can see it is a hydrogen bond donor so these atoms they are surrounded by a spherical sphere of magenta color which says that it is a hydrogen bond donor whereas in hydrophobic you can see a blue color and for uh, hydrogen bond acceptor you can see green color spheres so different colors are given to explain the different chemical features of properties so we can identify easily and then these are the distance pharmacophores so the distance between these atoms is given in angstroms so this is also an example of a pharmacophore so in this manner different uh, models are generated for the molecules uh, they can be uh, inactive compounds or active compounds so, so the different models are generated and then they are validated now coming to what are the different approaches in pharmacophore modeling so in pharmacophore modeling we have ligand based pharmacophore modeling and structure based so structure based pharmacophore modeling means when the protein structure is available for the ligands it is known as structure based molecules so here we take the protein structure and uh, when the protein structure is available we study its uh, active site so based on the active site of the protein the pharmacophoric models are generated and they are validated whereas in ligand based pharmacophore modeling what happens is here the protein structure is not available so when there is no protein structure available only the ligand information is available so all the ligands they are taken and they are aligned and after alignment different models are generated and in this ligand based pharmacophore modeling we have the ligands uh, different ligands they can be there so they can be active compounds moderately active compounds and inactive compounds so all these compounds they are aligned over each other and a training set and a test set is generated and analysis of the training set is generated and then based on this analysis uh, different pharmacophoric models are generated so all these pharmacophoric models uh, which are generated they are validated after validation they are ranked into different numbers and based on their ranking uh, we can select the final model and you can use it for different uh, applications in drug discovery for example we can use this pharmacophoric models for virtual screening ligand profiling docking ADMET prediction etc so uh, we, we can generate the pharmacophore models and after generating the pharmacophore model they are validated and they are applied for different uh, applications in drug discovery now diff the different softwares which are available for pharmacophore modeling so in this uh, slide i have listed all the softwares which are available for pharmacophore modeling they are hip hop hypogen farmer face gasp pharmagist farmapper moe ligand scout and galahad so some are uh, uh, free to use and some are paid software now coming to the advantages of pharmacophore so the uh, the different advantages of pharmacophore modeling are because these models they, they do not focus actual on the actual atoms but they are focusing on the chemical functionality so because they are not uh, func uh, focusing actually on the atoms and only on the chemical functionalities they are helpful uh, in recognizing similarity between molecules so we can easily differentiate uh, similar and dissimilar molecules so this is one advantage and another advantage is uh, they are independent of the scaffold so because they are independent of the scaffold it explains why uh, the same activity can be obtained from chemically divergent molecules so because in this pharmacophore modeling we are taking uh, different uh, chemically diverse uh, scaffolds so uh, the molecules uh, they need not always be similar in their scaffold so different scaffolds we take different molecules we take divergent chemically and we are aligning them and all these aligned molecules with the model which is generated 
they are specific specifically active on the same protein target so hence uh, this explains why different molecules they can act on the same protein target so this is one advantage of the pharmacophore and another one is uh, these models they act as query to perform search in large molecule large libraries of compounds so we have a databases of compounds uh, with millions of compounds so this pharmacophore model helps in uh, easy search or identification of uh, active molecules in uh, this large huge libraries of compounds in order to select molecules of interest for different applications in drug discovery like virtual screening or docking etc so these are the advantages of pharmacophore mapping i hope uh, this video was informative and if you like the video uh, do not forget to like share and subscribe to my channel and in the next video we will see how to actually perform pharmacophore mo modeling using a software so that's all for this video thank you for watching see you in the next one